Welcome everyone to my presentation. My name is Francisco Costa. I'm a PhD student in paleontology. And my presentation is titled Mirigailis Column is a species of stegosaur distinct from the Centaurus armatus. Revision of diagnostic differences by direct comparison. Stegosaurs of lived almost no presentation as one of the most iconic groups of dinosaurs and prehistoric animals, easily recognizable by their double row of plates and spikes on their backs. This presentation will focus mostly on one subplate, though, the Centurinae, defined as all those taxa closer to the Centaurus armatus than Stegosaurus stenops. This had a dominantly European and late Jurassic distribution with the first member discovered being the Centurus Armatus in 1875 in England, then Miragai and Longicolum in Portugal in 2009, Alcovasaurus Longispinus in Midwest North America, and most recently, Adraticlis Bolafa and Theriosaurus Atlasicus from the Middle Jurassic of Morocco. So, is Miragai and Longicolum a valid and distinct Stegosaurus species, or a junior synonym to the Centurus Armatus? This was, at times, a matter to question, since these are clearly related, sharing features that were ascribed to synapomorphies of the Centurion. But since the holotype of the Centurus is composed mainly of posterior skeleton, while that of Miragai is almost exclusively only the anterior half of the skeleton, these have very limited skeletal overlap that will allow direct comparisons, and most of the pharmacies of one cannot be verified on the other. So some authors have justifiably questioned the validity and description of Miragai logic column and suggested that these were synonymous. What every researcher disagreeing with about this matter agreed upon, though, was that another specimen, more complete and more representative of the whole skeleton, was what was needed. One that could clearly be ascribed to one of these species and then used as a sort of Rosetta Stone to solve this. This is almost exactly what the MG4863 specimen brought to the table, as it is represented by almost all areas of the skeleton, missing only the forelimb, long bones and dorsal plates. So it has extensive comparable overlap with both holotypes and all other Decentrian specimens known. After comparisons with the holotypes, Ten uniquely shared features with the holotype of Mirigai were found, differing from every other stegosaur species were known. Meanwhile, 27 features were found that differentiated it from the holotype of the Centurus armatus. So, clearly demonstrated that the MG specimen should belong to the same species as the MEL specimen, and that it could not belong to the species of the UK specimen. Therefore, clearly showing that Mirigai longicolum was a valid species distinct from the Centurus armatus. So sorted, right? What allegedly changed was a more recent paper describing a new specimen from the CT28 site in El Castellar Teruel in Spain, suggesting again that Miragaya longicolum is synonymized with the Centurus Armatus, based essentially on three claims by the authors. That is, first, that MG4863 was distinguished from the Centurus Armatus holotype based on ten characters, second, that those ten characters are ambiguous, and third, based on new morphological information provided by the new CT28 specimen. So, was MG4863 actually distinguished from Dacentrus Armatus holotype on just 10 characters? The table you see here, from Costa and Mateus 2018, is a summary of all the compared characters within with the agnostic value. And, as anyone can see in the scoring and the quote above, MG4863 was found to differ in 27 characters from Dacentrus holotype, the Miragaya holotype was found to differ in 11 characters, and 10 characters is the amount that both MG and the MEL specimens differ from the Dacenturus holotype, which are what the authors misquote, while omitting another 17 previously reported differences specifically between the MG4863 and the Dacenturus armatus holotype. But do these 17 actually reveal anything? Number 36. As reported prior, the neural arches of all mid and posterior color vertebrae of MG4863 are a third the width and height of the its centrum, distinctive from all the mid color vertebrae of the Decentrus holotype, which are all over half the width and height of the centrum, if not nearly as wide and tall as the centrum alone. This is like all other stegosaur taxa were known, including the Neo CT28 specimen, which analogously has large neural canals and thick and tall pedicels. The only other taxon, like the MG4863, is the Alcovasaurus longispinus holotype, which clearly had thin pedicels much narrower than the centrum. Number 32. Most stegosaur taxa have bulbous and wider than long apices of the anterior caudal neural spines, something that was at a time even considered diagnostic of stegosaurina. This is the case of Decenturus holotype, as clearly visible both in publications since 1875 and in person where these apices are much wider than long. Opposite to this, MG4863 
as apices expanded anteroposteriorly with almost no lateral expansion, so much longer than wide, as also are their shafts. Number 33. Anterior color ribs were reported MG4863 to be straight and mainly laterally oriented, while in the Decenturus holotype these are gently curved ventrally. More so, as observed more recently, including in the CT28 specimen, the ribs actually become more ventrally oriented going posteriorly in the caudal series, while in the MG4863 specimen the opposite occurs, as these become more dorsally. Oriented. Number 35. In MG4863, there is a sharp decrease in size of the neural spine among the anterior caudal vertebrae, from a spine taller than the centrum in caudal 9, to just a semicircle crest a fifth the height of the centrum in caudal 12, to a vestigial ridge in caudal 15. That is, even before reaching the mid caudals, the neural spine is gone in MG4863. Meanwhile, in the Dastinturus holotype, at least two mid caudal vertebrae have long and well developed neural spines, apparently about as tall as the centrum. This is also, like most other stegosaurs, which, where the decrease in size of neural spine is gradual along the tail, as also is their inclination, mostly constant on slightly increasingly posterior. So those were some of the differences that the authors did not discuss. What about those other 10 that the authors claim are ambiguous? These are the cervical characters, and essentially correspond to the differences between the holotypes of Miragaya and the Centurus. The cervical material in the Decentrus holotype is incomplete, and therefore the authors claim this to be ambiguous, effectively uninformative for any and all characters evaluated with it. This part is where my work differs the most from my previous works, as recently I've been fortunate to analyze firsthand the other type of the centurus, as well as type specimens of various other stegosaur species, and naturally, based on what the fossils evidence, there were some corrections to what can be considered valid differences and similarities, as no one can figure out everything just by publications and photos. So indeed, after direct comparisons of all these specimens, two of these characters, 28 and 29, were found to be just variations among Stegosaur taxa, not diagnostically informative. Another, character 7, was indeed erroneously scored as a difference in the holotype of the intruders. The other characters, however, number 23, a feature observed in both the MG4863 and ML433 specimens, is that the cervical vertebrae have spin of postecopophysial laminae that pass on the sides of the neural spine along with another pair of more medial associated ridges, culminating in an anterior projection on the base of the neural spine, which was previously an autopormophy for Miragaya column character 4. In the Decenturus holotype, and in some other stegosaurs, lower and shorter ridges may be present just posteriorly to the neural spine and in, in some cervical vertebrae, without associated middle ridges, but never pass on the sides of neural spine or cumulate anteriorly as can be clearly seen in the Decentrus holotype, in publications, pictures, and in person. Character 25. In both ML433 and MG4863, the cervical neural spines are positioned over the anterior half of the centra and become more anterior position, progressing posteriorly in the cervical series, both in relation to the centrum and the ends of the zygopophysis as well as the pedicel edges. This is the opposite of all other stegosaur taxa, where known, where these are positioned over the posterior half of the centrum and become even more positioned posteriorly, passing posteriorly on the cervical series. In the Decenturus holotype, the neural spine is positioned mostly central in relation to the zygopophysis, but the prezygopophysis is also incomplete anteriorly. This neural arch indeed did not preserve a centrum with it, but measuring the distance of the neural spine to the pedicel edges, it is three times greater anteriorly than posteriorly, while in the fellow posterior cervical vertebrae of the Miragaya holotype, it is the opposite, measuring on average three times greater posteriorly than anteriorly. Number 27. All the cervical prasic apophysis of the Miragaya holotype and MG4863 are round posteriorly and straight anteriorly, with an anterodorsal notch. The posterior edge is actually so elevated that, as can be clearly seen in these pictures, in lateral view all overlap the neural spine. In contrast to this, in the Decenturus holotype, the posterior edge is very flat with the top of the neural arch so that even if the neural spine was complete, it could never overlap it in the lateral view. Also, the neural spine of the Decenturus holotype is clearly expanded posteriorly, but not transversally, which is unique to it and therefore autopromorphic. While in the Miragaya holotype, it is clearly instead expanded transversely in the top half of the spine. So, what about the CT28 specimen, which I had the pleasure of seeing myself in person? Unfortunately, this specimen consists of dorsal vertebrae and ribs, pelvic bones, anterior mid caudal vertebrae, ephemer, and a tibia. So, in fact, it is much less complete than Decenturus armatus holotype, 
has no novel material not already included in the Decentur Dramatis Holotep, nor any novel region representation as the holotype includes all that material, plus cervical vertebrae, dorsal plates, caudal spines, posterior caudal vertebrae, forelimbs, and autopodia. Also, the CT28 specimen has no overlap with Miragynological holotype except for one anterior dorsal vertebrae. So, all comparisons made by the authors with Miragynological were made in proxy with MG4863. Nonetheless, the authors note that CT28 specimen, while demonstrating the permafis of the Centurus armatus, also demonstrates one autopermaphy of Miragaya Logicolum and two synopermaphies of Miragaya genus, which should question the distinction of this taxa and validity of diagnosis. This being respectively characters 31, 16, and 17 in Caution Materials 2019. However, character 31, close proximal dorsal canals of the ribs of the first caudal vertebrae, indeed should not be considered diagnostic of Miragaya Logicolum because these are also present in the Anbelon Ultimus as demonstrated last year and later corroborated by the agreeably Decentrus Armato CT28 specimen. So these are homologous to the proximal dorsal process present on the anterior caudal ribs of some stegosaur taxa, including the Decentrus Armatus holotype, just more developmentally exaggerated in these specimens. Character 16, posterior caudal center with apple-shaped cross-section are not demonstrated in the CT28 specimen as the authors misidentify eventually projection ossified chevron processes as this condition in a mid caudal vertebrae. That is, the centrum is actually convexly rounded ventrally, as evident in the anterior facet in isolation and alike the holotype of the centrus. In contrast, all mid and posterior caudal centra of MG4863 are concave ventrally, with projections in both anterior and posterior facets, and are excavated ventrally by an, a marked anterior posterior groove. What gives the CT28 vertebrae the appearance of being apple-shaped is the presence of ossified chevron processes and only on the posterior articular facet, which is a condition autopomorphic of the Centrus armatus, according to various authors, so its recognition actually further supports its classification to the Centrus armatus. Moreover, the vertebrae in subject is caudal 25, making it a mid-caudal vertebrae, not posterior, while both mid- and posterior caudal vertebrae of the Centrus holotype are rounded ventrally, clearly not evidenced in that condition. Character 17. Transverse processes in all caudal vertebrae are not evidenced to occur in the CT28 specimen, as the most posterior caudal vertebrae of the specimen is, again, not a posterior caudal, but a mid caudal vertebrae. This is congruent with some stegosaur species with transverse processes in the, mid in the first two thirds of the deal, such as Cantrosaurus and Asperosaurus, while most others only have them until less than half the extension of the deal. By contrast, only in the holotype of Alcavosaurus M and MG4863 are these present in the posterior and posterior most caudal vertebrae, that is, up to caudal 40 at least. And more significantly, again, the posterior caudal vertebrae of the Decentrus holotype lack transverse processes, as visibly evident and reported previously, including by Galton 1985. So, to summarize, after revisions by first hand comparisons, the preliminary results without omissions is that the diagnostic differences from the Decentrus holotype in MG4863 were reduced to 22 in male 433 to 8, and of both to 7. Therefore, while Sanchez, Fenelaz et al. have proposed a synonymization of Miragallogical with Decentrus armatus based on three claims, first, the claim that MG4863 was distinguished from Decentrus armatus holotype based only on 10 characters is misquoted, as the authors omit from that discussion 17 differences previously reported, despite claiming to be an absence of morphological criteria to distinguish these tags and specimens. Second, the claim that, that all those 10 characters are ambiguous in the cervical fossils of the Decentrus holotype is unsupported by the fossil evidence. And third, the contribution of neomorphological information from the CT28 specimen to a revision of Miragai Logic Column is very limited, almost inconsequential, as it only corroborates previous works that one proposed autopomorphy is an interspecific variation, therefore not valid as diagnostic. That said, the CT28 specimen is of course a very important addition to characterize the Centrus armatus, more so given that further evidence was identified in agreement with Sanchez Fenelaz et al. to support its classification to the species. And so, to finalize, despite the slight reduction of valid diagnostic different characters between these specimens from previous works, there are still far sufficient morphological criteria to demonstrate that both MG463 and ML43D could not be classified to the same species as the Centrus armatus holotype, and therefore, a synonymization of Miragai Logic Column with Decentrus Armatus is the most unfounded and contradictory of the fossil evidence. Nor can or should these specimens be included in a hypodigm of Decentrus Armatus, which should avoid future unnecessary taxonomical confusion on taxa that have been already so problematic until now.
Thank you for your attention.